So Dalton, thank you for being on Man360. Yep, you're welcome, man. I'm happy to be here. Very excited. Yeah, I, I appreciate you and your Denver Bronco-ness uh, <laughs> playing professional, being a professional athlete. But I wanted to definitely talk to you a little bit about kind of the behind the scenes and just who you are as a man. And uh, for our viewers to be able to hear that and see that I think is really important. So can you talk a little bit about just your faith journey and just coming to Jesus? Yeah, of course, man. Well, first, thanks for having me on. This is what it's all about. You know, I, being able to play in the NFL, that's a dream come true. But at the same time, you know, being able to use my platform to talk about Jesus and be a role model for others, mm -hmm. that's what it's all about. Being able to be here today and talk about Jesus with you, man, that, I, I love being able to do that. So thank you so much. Um, my faith journey started way back to when I can even remember. I had two great parents that, you know, always had me going to Sunday school, always had me going to church and youth group. And, you know, I had some motives for youth group. You know, for every Bible verse we memorized, we got a pizza. So my, my love for food started off pretty quick <laughs> That's awesome. um, in, in that respect. Um, but, man, I, I did all those things, right? I was baptized. I believed in Jesus Christ with all my heart. I had great parents that yeah. introduced me to who that was at a young age and, and what my life could look like if I did follow him. And that, I was so grateful for that. But I felt like I really didn't know who Jesus was. I didn't take time to open the Bible and really just talk to Jesus or really talk to Jesus on my own. I just felt like I was checking off the list. Mm. And when I got to college, you know, in college, I feel like we're all trying to find ourselves and figure out who is Dalton Reisner? Who am I going to be? What do I want to do in life? And I met a couple great mentors, one by the name of Morgan Burns. Morgan Burns lived in the dorms for all five years. I remember asking him a question, Morgan, why do you still live in the freshman dorms? I can't wait to get out of here. And he said, man, I'm staying in here for five years because you freshmen that come in, that's, that's what you guys need help with the most wow. is when you first show up. Yeah. And that's when a lot of you guys lose your way, lose your relationship with Jesus because you're around new people and peer pressure and mom and dad aren't there to tell you what you can and can't do. And when I, saw, when I heard him say that, that was the start of me looking at Morgan as such a great mentor. Yeah. Well, we go throughout that first year of college, and he teaches me a lot about my faith. One thing that he taught me is, I said, Morgan, you're always talking about Jesus speaking to you. I feel like the world talks about Jesus speaking to them a lot. And I said, I've never heard a voice in my ear. I've never heard someone mm -hmm. tell me what to do. Mm -hmm. And he, he encouraged me to start, he asked me, do you read the Bible? you get in the Bible and read? I'm like, well, I read verses or memorize them. He's like, take some time to open the Bible and just try to get to know Jesus. I started to do that. It was remarkable through the good and the bad. No matter when I seek the Lord, he always found me. Whether That's it was awesome. I could flip the Bible, I just practiced it almost. It wasn't a test by any means, but some days I just grabbed the Bible and opened it. I'm like, how is he going to speak to me today? And I, he would just find ways to speak That's to awesome. me. And I just thought it was remarkable, man. So Morgan taught me so much. He ended up getting uh, an invite to go to Titans football camp for the uh, NFL and yeah. he shows up to camp and he made the team which is unheard of from wow. a mini camp invite. Yeah. Morgan Burns was the quickest person in the NFL ever to retire. They offered him wow. a contract to be a part of the 50 man, three man roster and play in the NFL. Morgan said, I'm sorry, I'm gonna have to polite, politely uh, decline. I actually just wanna do this to prove to myself that I could do it because this isn't my calling. I wanna be a missionary. Wow. So got the call to be an NFL player, <laughs> wow. said thank you, but no thank you, I'm done. I'm gonna go be a missionary. So wow. um, long story short, he played such a huge role for me in college, yeah. just being a great mentor and a man of faith and showed me what it looked like. Yep. And as soon as he did that, I started to get to know Jesus and that's where my faith blossomed. And I started having love for helping mm. others. And oh my gosh, this is who Dalton is. This is the life that I wanna live. Yeah. And I could talk for more hours about yeah. it, but that's where it kind of bloomed out. That's awesome. So as a professional athlete, um, you know, what do you think are some of maybe the challenges as a, being a Christian in that environment? You know, what do you feel like some of the general challenges are? Um, you know, I think there's some maybe obvious things from people from the outside, but you're in the system. Yep. Um, you know, and I know that you're looked at maybe more as just a commodity, you know, to the people around you, which is true, you know, in the NFL and different sports and professional athlete in the athletic realm. Yep. But what do you feel like are some of those challenges for just living for Jesus? Yeah, man, there's multiple challenges in the NFL when you follow Jesus Christ. And especially in my circumstance, I love being outspoken about that. I'd be remiss if I had an NFL platform with millions of kids that look up to me and whatever mm -hmm. it is, maybe thousands. And, and I didn't use that platform to talk about Jesus instead of talking about a new car, or a new house. Like that opportunity for me is huge. Right. I look myself in the mirror and I say, I'm six foot five, 300 pounds. I didn't work hard for that. I might have worked hard eating mama's pancakes growing up, but I did or not memorizing work. Bible verses yes, and getting free yes, pizzas. Yes, right? <laughs> but I didn't work hard to be six foot five. The Lord blessed me with that. I yeah. think he wants me to do something with that. So yeah. let me use this platform to do good for other people. And yeah. when you're in the NFL, a, a lot of eyes are on you. So when you are outspoken about being a Christian and you take so much, you know, 
you take so much, so much pride in being a Christian mm -hmm. that you realize how many people are watching you. Whatever yeah. you say, whenever you go out, no matter what you do, eyes are on you. So you never want to do something that's out of character. You never want to do right. something that makes people view you like, wow, he's a Christian and he does that. But one thing that I think is important to remember, and I was talking to you about it earlier, yeah. is that I'm just a man. You look at guys right. in the NFL, and yes, it's great to have fans and people that look up to us, but we are human. I am just a man. That is it. Yeah. And you might see someone on TV and think, oh my gosh, how cool it would be to meet them, but me and you are just men of faith right now talking. Yeah. And I think that's what's important to remember, especially in the NFL. But you, you have players that you're concerned, do my teammates believe in this? Yeah. Are my teammates okay if I pray? Right. Are they okay if I ask them to pray? In the NFL, you're, it's, the NFL stands for not for long. And as an NFL athlete, you want to play in the NFL for as long as possible. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be real honest with you here. Sometimes it comes to my attention in my head. Is it in my best interest to be so outspoken about my faith whenever I'm unsure if my boss is okay with that? Mm -hmm. Maybe my boss wants it to be all about football. And I have no idea. I, right. I would like to think that all everyone is okay with that. And it's okay to be outspoken about your faith. Yeah. But that's another obstacle in the NFL that you have to think about. Because yeah. this isn't college. You got a scholarship and you're there forever. Right. This is the NFL. You know, you could be gone in a matter of a week. I could get the call today. Mm -hmm. So being outspoken about your faith and following Jesus, there's definitely some roadblocks and obstacles along the way while yeah. being in the NFL. Yeah. But nothing that you and Jesus can't overcome, nothing right. that I haven't so far. And it sounds like, too, for you, you know, it's a calling for you and not just an athletic career. Yeah. And recognizing and realizing, too, that just the, the length and scope of that, it's like if people don't know you're a Christian, but they just know you as a great athlete, that time could fade. But if they know you as a Christian mm -hmm. and you've built those inroads with people, that's where that really lasts. And I know, too, the Reisner Up Foundation, I wanted you to share real quick about, about that program and what you're doing. Yeah, for sure, man. I've always loved helping people. You just spoke on it a little bit right there. I think identity is so huge. Yeah. I am not an NFL football player. I hope when you leave today, you say, man, that's a great man of God. And I hope to see him again because that's what matters. Right. And I want to be remembered as someone that uh, walks with God. And whenever I'm done playing football, I'm going to be a follower of Jesus. I'm not going to be right. worried about it. Right. So with the foundation, I just love doing so much good, man. So my foundation is a way for me to give back to other people with my platform. Mm -hmm. I was doing so much community service in college that I had the opportunity to, hey, how am I going to bring this together? How can I empower the world to see what I'm doing and get other people to do the same thing? Yeah. So whether it's with Special Olympics or with kids that have cancer or building a new home here in Colorado, we just want to do good. And that's yeah. what the foundation's about. First Peter 4 tends the verse, uh, each of you should use whatever gift you have rece received as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. We each were That's given awesome. a gift. You were given a gift. I can see it already today. Yeah. I was given a gift. How can we use that to glorify God? For sure. Yeah, I think it sounds like too, so I have an auto mechanic background in my family or whatever. It's kind of like a little carburetor in the gas, uh, or gas in the carburetor to get the engine going yeah. for even other people as well. And that you want that to continue <laughs> yep. and not just be, oh, I wish Dalton was here doing this. It's like, well, we can do this too. We can be kind. We yes, can see exactly. those things too. Yes, exactly. So not awesome. just doing it for yourself, but how can I empower other people to do the same thing, right. and which in return can make such a great world, man. And yeah. it's funny you say that. I have an old 79 Ford and I got to spray, uh, I got to spray that. Gum out, that, or, yeah, gum out in yeah, the carburetor. Yeah, every single time. Or a little bit of gas to get <laughs> yeah, it started, man. So hilarious. I know what you're saying. Yeah, my dad, he's probably watching this right now. He'd be like, yeah, I know exactly how to do that. So he taught me some of those things too. Heck yeah. So one more thing, and the kind of last thing is, how do you keep your faith fresh during a football season? Obviously, you have a hectic schedule. You're, you're not maybe even on Sundays, obviously, as your, your church can be a, you know, where you're playing. How yep. do you keep that fresh? Man, one thing I think that the Broncos do here in town is they make it, so easy for us to keep our faith fresh. We That's have a awesome. chaplain that they have for us on the team. That's not something that every team has. So I'm so grateful for our chaplain. His name's Rez, and he comes to the facility once a week, especially during camp, and we get to just get together as men every single day. And not everyone has to go. It's an optional thing in between meetings yeah. after lunch. Take your lunch in there, talk about Jesus. And especially in those hard times of camp when it's 100 degrees out, you're battling for your job. That stuff is awesome to be able yeah. to go in there and talk about Jesus. And remember, I'm not just Dalton the football player. I'm much more than that. I'm much more worthy than just yeah. the sport of football. And that's right. something that is so great to remember. It makes the game feel really small. And when you can make the game feel really small, it helps you so much not have as much pressure, right. man. But throughout sure. the year, between that 
And then on Sundays, like you mentioned, it's so great. We play, pray as a team before the game. We go in the, the shower after we're all dressed up in our pads, in our cleats. We all stand and hold arms and pray together as a team. Uh, we do the Lord's Prayer before and after the game. So they definitely do a great job of putting us in situations for us to still talk to Jesus and make that a fact. But yeah. like you said, we do play on Sundays. I don't have the opportunity to go to church. So a lot of times I'll, I'll have a pastor that I really enjoy watching. I'll watch on YouTube with my fiance the day after, the day before the game. Mm -hmm. And I think it's just so important to remember that you don't have to go to church to believe in Jesus. I, I go to yeah. football for six months and I don't get an opportunity to really step foot in a church on a Sunday. Yeah. I still have a great relationship with Jesus Christ and I love him. You yeah. don't have to do that to follow him. Of course, we love glorifying God. I'm going to do it in any way that I can. Um, but there are definitely ways that we can keep our relationship with Jesus fresh throughout the year. And I think it's always important to get around people that push you. Yeah. We have some great players and teammates on my team and even coaches and friends in my life that kept keep, you know, Jesus in my mind that's and keep good. my relationship with him fresh, especially family members. And yeah. whether that's calling them and talking to them throughout the week and you name it, we do it. And I think that uh, it's definitely hard. You wish that you could be there on Sundays. You yeah. wish that you could be more involved. But there's never an excuse to not talk to him because you can talk to Jesus at any time. Right. It makes me smile. Yeah, I think it's interesting you talked about and said that you know you can be anywhere. You don't have to be in church to be able to have that relationship. But I feel like church is also such an important part of that. Yep. But it's like it's not where you when you go to church, it should be a part of the rest of your relationship with God and not, hey, I went to Sunday. We were talking about that, too. When we were just talking off camera about just checking the check marks while yep. I went to church, read my Bible, said my prayers, got my pizza, you know, whatever it yeah. is but that that can be a part of the full part of what you're talking about, just having that full relationship with Jesus, which is where you want to live. And it's such an instrumental part because yeah. of course I wish I could be in church during the season. Of, of course. course I wish I could be there every yeah. Sunday because being able to actually be in church, you know, whenever I go through the season, I almost forget about it. I get through the off season. I try to go every Sunday and just being able to praise the Lord with the music that's there and be able to just celebrate with people around you and just get one-on-one -on -one time with Jesus yeah. and hear a pastor talk about he or she talk about whatever it is that day straight out of the Bible, straight out of Jesus's word. There's nothing better. Man. Right. Awesome. Dalton, thank you yeah, for being thank on you Man so 360. Much. And uh, we'll be praying for you when we see you not to get hurt as well. Thank and you, for your conditioning and all those things, and just for that you can just let Jesus shine through you. I will. I'll continue to do that, I promise, man. That's one thing that's most important to me is my relationship with Jesus, and that's something I'll never fall through with, man. So thank you so much. You Pleasure bet. being on here. Thank you.